everyone. So we read your comments, we saw what you wanted next, and the next one that you really wanted was butterfly pull-ups. So we are here today to talk about butterfly pull-ups. We've done the kipping toes bar, the kipping pull-up, and now we're gonna go over butterfly pull-up. So just a couple things. We're not gonna go through the hollow hold, hollow arch progression that we've done in the last two videos on the ground. So if you haven't checked those out, make sure you watch those videos. We should always be starting with that progression on the ground. And then we should be building the strength with the active hang from the bar before we're attempting butterfly pull-ups. We wanna make sure we have the core strength and the shoulder strength before adding the load to our shoulder joint when kipping or doing butterfly. So for the kipping versus the butterfly, there's only gonna be a few small changes. It's gonna be almost more of a hip-driven movement and then our arms are gonna relax and we're gonna fall through. So I'm gonna show you what a couple of those look like and then we're gonna give you some drills and some ways to break it down and then also some accessories on the end to help you build the strength so you can get your butterfly pull-ups or increase your stamina and endurance with this movement. All right, so today I've got Pat, my husband, okay who is actually gonna be our demo today, and he's also gonna give you some of his tips and advice for the butterfly pull-up as well. The reason I'm having him join us is so I can pause him in positions and point out to you guys the different positions that we should be in so we can get the timing down right for the butterfly pull-up, and also because he's the one that taught me to do butterfly pull-ups, and it's probably one of my favorite CrossFit movements other than the ring muscle-up. So he's gonna show us what a couple of butterfly pull-ups look like, and then we'll show you our first drill that will help with timing. All right, so a couple things you're gonna notice is that he was falling through on the butterfly pull-up. So that's gonna be the key, and that's what we're gonna talk about right now. So Pat's gonna step up on this box. The first thing, we're just using this as kind of mimicking our positioning and our timing. So he's gonna have one leg on the box. He's gonna mimic his start kip. So like he's hanging from the bar, and then he comes through. This is that hollow arch position so that we've talked about in other videos. From here, he's gonna drive back on the bar. As he drives back, his chest now is behind the bar and his toe is out in front. And then, in a kipping pull-up, you would traditionally pull your chin over the bar, but instead, he's gonna think about, as he's rising up, his chest will fall through. And as his chest falls through, his leg now kicks back behind. So we're back into that starting kipping swing. So push back, hollow arch, hollow arch, hollow body. Okay, so a couple more times. So chest through, leg back, chest through, leg back. Go ahead and relax. So just a couple things that we're working on there is as his chest was behind the bar that we noticed, his toe was out in front, so he's in that hollow hold position. His head is gonna be driving up and back by his hips driving the movement, and then as his chest falls forward through the bar, his foot swings back behind. So now he's in the hollow arch position that we talked about in those previous two videos. So now that we've got the hang of kind of the circles that we should be making, we need to get our chin over the bar. So to do that, we wanna focus on this as a hip-driven movement. So our hips are creating the power. We're not breaking at our hips, but we're keeping our knees locked together and we're using our hips to drive us up behind the bar. So Pat's gonna tell you a little bit more about that. Uh, so what this motion is really generated by is power coming from my hips. And what I wanna be focused on is keeping my knees straight and engaged. That means I'm squeezing my butt and my core because as soon as my knees break, that means all that power I'm generating from my hips goes away. So I wanna translate that power from my hips into up and back. And when my knees break, I lose that and it tends to make people wanna pull early, which is what we wanna avoid. We wanna wait till we hit that moment of weightlessness and that's the only time I gently pull through with my arms and I'm going to fall through. So our next drill, we're gonna start with drawing small circles. So we've done the small circles, the kipping back, and then the falling through, but now we wanna finish our circle. So we're gonna fall through, and as Pat falls through, he's gonna immediately think about pushing back, up above the, pushing back on the bar to drive his head high behind the bar. Each time he falls through, he's gonna push a little bit harder, slowly making his ovals or his circles bigger to get his chin up over the bar. So I'll kinda of talk you through it as he's doing it. So chest through, small circles. Good. So he's getting a little higher, push him back. And relax. Good. 
So you'll notice as his chest fell through, then you saw him drive down hard. So his head is going back up behind the bar. And that's where he gives that small pull. Again, thinking about the chest driving back through. So he's not physically pulling himself to the bar and pushing away. He's just pulling enough with his elbows to create the momentum traveling forward to fall through. So now he can push back. So timing on the butterfly pull-ups is huge. If you feel like you're, you know, you get two or three, but then you're totally off, it's probably because we're over pulling and we're trying to get our chin over the bar directly over top. It's not like a kipping pull-up. You wanna imagine that the bar goes all the way across. So there's this big plane. So we're actually clearing the bar as we drive back, as you saw Pat doing. So he's clearing the plane there. So that's when his pull-up is good. And then he's falling forward through the rig post like I've talked about in the other videos. So his chest is now in front. As he's falling through, he's relaxing so he can immediately push back on the bar. And I think sometimes our timing gets screwed up because we're one, trying to pull too far like a kipping pull up, or two, we're almost bottoming out as to where we fall through, try to come to a dead stop, and we're half a second too late on remembering to drive our head back up behind the bar. It's very taxing on our laps. It can be very taxing on our chest. So you wanna make sure that you're staying tight and keeping your entire body connected so we're not losing any energy like we talked about with the hips or the knees throughout this entire movement. What I'm going to show you guys now is where your head should be when you're doing these and what we want to try to avoid head positioning. So if I get up here, when I'm pulling myself through, I want to be back and behind the bar and I'm leaning my chin back to actually slide right underneath. When my position's back here, I should be looking up at the top corner of the gym and then rolling my head back just to slide my chin underneath the bar. What I want to avoid doing is getting it over the bar because then I'm going to have to drop straight down and that's going to throw your rhythm off and turn it into more of a butterfly pull up. We want to create small head circles. So once we've gotten to the butterfly pull up, really before we even get there, we should have strict pull ups. We should have at least probably five to seven reps. We should have kipping pull ups at least sets of, you know, again, five, seven, 10 reps. We should be comfortable doing kipping pull ups and workouts before we dive in. A lot of people want to start with butterfly before kipping. And I highly recommend you get comfortable with kipping pull ups because it is, it requires the strength um, and you're not just falling through onto your shoulder joint. So make sure you've mastered those two things before we get to the butterfly pull up. I think one of the biggest things for the butterfly pull up is the differences in the kip. We have to get our head high behind the bar to create that space for your chest to fall through. So the, the push down is just a little bit different. So the drill I like to use for this is again a banded lat pull down, but I like to take the PVC pipe, hook it through my band so it mimics the rig position. And from here, I'm gonna take my hands just like I would set up for my butterfly pull up. So my hands are just outside of my shoulder. I'm gonna squeeze my butt and my quads, hollow, kind of like my hollow position so I'm not just relaxed. Eyes are forward so my spine is neutral and I'm gonna pull my palms down back towards my hips. If that's too easy, I can take a small step back, create a little bit more tension on the band. And again, trying to keep my arms straight, I'm gonna pull down. Trying not to compromise by bending my arms or leaning forward. So I really like those for extra strength in our lats to focus on keeping our arms straight as we drive down. I would hit probably three sets of 30 plus reps, rest as needed in between your rounds. But the key is maintain a hollow midline or hollow, hollow position is what we want, but maintain a tight, strong midline and then focus on using your lats and keeping your arms straight as we drive your palms down towards your hips. So one other drill we wanna talk about is we keep talking about our hips and our glutes and everything staying tight. So it's gonna be a glute, elevated glute bridge on a box. So what's gonna happen? I'm gonna come down, bring my feet up onto the box, and then from here, I'm just gonna lift and squeeze. So you'll notice I can come back a little bit, but you'll notice in that top position, I'm hollow from my shoulder through my knee, squeezing my butt, keeping my midline tight, and then coming back down. So that's gonna teach us to have some tension in the back of our legs and also teach us how to use our hips in this movement. So again, a good set scheme would be like 30 band pull downs, super set with 20 elevated glute bridges, three total sets after or before your class. So one last point that we really wanna drive home is the small circles is a big, big piece. 
learn the small circles with the box first, then go into the kip where you focus on driving back and then just one quick fall through. And then just after class, what I really like to practice are after your workout before, if your hands are good, make sure you're not overdoing this and you are taking care of your hands because it's gonna be tough on them. It's just thinking about starting with one small circle and then slowly make it bigger and bigger, just trying to keep the rhythm until we can hopefully get our chin over the bar and then take a break. So what that would look like, hopping up, active shoulders, chest through, smaller, and then I'm slowly getting bigger and bigger. Once I get my chin over the bar for that first good rep, I can take a break. I like the small circles, like Pat showed you, all the drills he showed you, the small circles are great because it can help you get the hang of the rhythm without worrying about getting your chin over the bar from the start. So it just really builds that good movement pattern in the muscle memory as we slower get higher and higher. All right, so this is a little tidbit on butterfly pull-ups. I hope it has helped. I think the key is patience and practice. And when we say patience and practice, don't do them in your workouts to start. Get the hang of the timing, the rhythm, the strength that you need in your shoulders for these butterfly pull-ups, practicing outside of your workouts to start until you can comfortably do sets of three to five reps, then maybe we start to throw them into a workout. We don't wanna be practicing these under major fatigue to start, we just wanna get the hang of the rhythm, hang of the movement, build the good muscle memory, and they will come. And I promise you, the more patient you are, the more you do practice in a controlled setting and for quality reps, the further down the road you will get and the, it will just be a movement that sticks with you and it doesn't break down with you when you get tired. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions about what we went over today, make sure you comment below, like, subscribe, because we've got more fun videos. Bar Muscle Ups are next.